look, Summer Crisp, uh, it's time we have a, a talk. Um, I've been kind of thinking this over for the past couple of years, and we've, we've had a great relationship, you and I. Just, uh, we've really connected in a lot of summers, a lot of beautiful Michigan summers, and uh, spent many times at night just kind of walking through the, uh, through the garden together, but I think it's time we break up. Um, you know, and it's not you, it's me. I had a lot of expectations when we entered this uh, relationship, and uh, you know, I didn't really expect your fruits to be so misshapen all the time. And, and I honestly didn't know that you were one of the hardest apples to grow when I planted you. I just, I, I saw you in the, uh, I saw you in the Myers uh, greenhouse section, and I just thought, man, that's a beautiful looking tree. And honestly, I kind of had rose colored glasses when I planted you, and I don't want to say that I kind of, I didn't want to string you along. You know, I think it's just time that we maybe part ways and I need someone in my life that's going to produce fruit for me. And, um, and uh, I think there's other gardeners that might appreciate you and there's more, there's more fish in the sea. So I think it's just time that we break up. What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about this apple tree. In fact, both of our apple trees, because like I said, we're going to be kind of ending our relationship with these apple trees. The summer crisp apple is something that I really had a lot of high hopes for. And when I planted it seven years ago, I didn't even realize a lot of the problems that would, uh, that would ensue. I have encountered so many problems with these trees from disease to pests to pollination issues. It's just something that I would like to move on from. And not all is lost. We're gonna use the apple wood in our smoker. So that's gonna, there's gonna be some benefit there, but we're gonna cut these trees down. And then in the spring, we're gonna plant some new apple trees to fill their space. And so I thought it'd be kind of a good opportunity for me to showcase some of the things that I've learned throughout the process of growing these trees and uh, really highlight the mistakes that I've made because I do make mistakes. Clearly I've made mistakes with these trees and then kind of, kind of finish with the capstone of this episode, which is kind of to show you all when when the time to move on is the right time. Like when to know when the right time to move on is because um, as gardeners, sometimes we don't wanna end a relationship too early because we think in our mind, maybe next year is different. And that was the biggest mistake. Spoiler, that was the biggest mistake that I could make is always thinking that maybe next year would be different. So um, let's get on to the episode and talk about the first mistake that I made. So the first mistake that I made is not doing my research. A lot of people always say that planting a tree is like a marriage. And so all jokes aside, this is a long-term commitment. And when you plant a tree, you wanna make sure that you know what you're planting and you know what you're getting yourself into. When I bought these trees at Meyer seven years ago, I didn't have any idea what I was getting myself into. I just thought, oh, these trees look beautiful and I wanna grow some apple trees in my orchard, so I'm gonna buy them and throw them in the garden. Little did I know, these are some of the hardest apple tree varieties to grow and most orchardists don't even add them to their orchard because of how problematic they can be. The first thing, like I said, is just not doing my research. Um, had I done my research, I would have instantly found out that these are extremely pest prone, like in the case of our Japanese uh, beetle damage or in the case of uh, this fire blight, which is like plaguing our, plaguing our leaves, so much fire blight on these uh, apples. And then also things like the weevil. So we have, or the plum curculio, I should say. The plum curculio has just decimated these apples, creating them, you know, making them super pitted and gnarly. And then also things like tent caterpillars. We've had so many tent caterpillars over the past years that it's just completely defoliated uh, these trees and really set them back. And then finally, uh, one of the you know, final issues has been just the overall uh, fruit, you know, the fruit yield has been super subpar. Um, years where we get a lot of fruit, they're all really small and mangly and none of them are really that edible. And all of that can be boiled down to just doing your research. I would have known all of those things, all of them, had I just done a little bit of research before I bought my trees. All right, the second mistake that I made when planting these trees is I planted only one variety. Now again, this is something that I, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have done that had I known what I know now, because when you plant only one variety, you lack diversity. And diversity really it encourages things like cross-pollination. If I had, say, a summer crisp here and, I don't know, a gala apple or a Fuji, right? If I had two different varieties of apples, there could actually be good cross-pollination, which helps with fruit yield and overall resistance to things like disease. 
And so I basically planted two of the exact same varieties because again, they were the prettiest ones on the lot and I didn't really, I didn't really do any research prior and I also didn't really even know what I was doing when I first planted. And so by planting only one variety really set me up for failure right from the get-go because when one tree would get diseased, that would spread to the other tree. When one tree would get pests, the pests would just migrate over to the other tree. There was no counterbalance. There was no, uh, there was really nothing kind of uh, to keep checks and balances in our orchard. And so if you are planting fruit trees, do your research one, and number two, plant lots of varieties. Variety is definitely the spice of life when it comes to fruit trees. So the third thing that I learned with this tree, and one that I'm very grateful to have learned with this tree, is proper pruning techniques. Now the reason why I'm so grateful for that is because this tree really showed me from an early stage how a tree should be pruned. Now there was lots of trees that had very poor, uh, very poor shape and they were uh, very improperly pruned, very kind of all over the place. These trees were pruned correctly right from the get go and so it showed me what the shape should look like as the tree matured and that helped me to get this beautiful shape. That's one of the reasons why I'm so torn about this decision is because this tree has one of the most developed beautiful goblet shapes that I've really seen on uh, apple trees that I've personally grown. Um, I've grown lots of apple trees at different houses I've lived at and different relatives that I've planted for. And this tree just showcases exactly what you wanna go for. Such an open center, really allows that light in, that airflow, just such a great shape to go for. And this taught me how to do that. If I would've gone with some of those other trees, I may not have learned how to properly prune my trees. So I am thankful in that regard for, uh, for what this tree gave me, which was experience on how to prune my trees. The fourth thing that I learned with these varieties specifically is that they produce a ton of water sprouts. Now water sprouts are down at the base of the tree and they actually will start to grow up from the bottom of the tree and steal energy away from the tree. Certain varieties will produce more water sprouts than others. These summer crisps are notorious for producing water sprouts. And so had I again done some research, I would have known that uh, the water sprouts are something that every single year you have to come back and prune them out or take like a weed whacker and weed whack around the trees to get rid of all those water sprouts because they're gonna start to grow up, they're gonna start to actually develop and mature and they're not ones that you actually want to grow. They're gonna grow from the root stock of the apple tree rather than the actual, uh, the actual graft because all apple trees are grafted, believe it or not. They take a root stock and graft on the summer crisp top. And so whatever is growing down below is very notorious. And the reason why is because summer crisp are not a very aggressive grower. The more aggressive the grower, the more aggressive the, uh, the, more, the less aggressive the root stock has to be. And so um, because these are so kind of feeble and weak, the root stock really takes over and it's just like, all right, if you're not gonna use this energy, I will step aside. And so that's one other thing that I've learned with these varieties of trees is they have a lot of water sprouts. All right, the fifth thing that I've learned from growing these apple trees is how often and how much you have to fertilize. Now I did get them correct when I planted them in that I did not fertilize initially. For the first three months or so, you don't want to fertilize because what you want to do is let the roots expand out throughout the soil. That was a correct thing that I did. The incorrect thing that I did was not fertilizing enough. I probably could have gotten two or three times the growth initially had I fertilized just a little bit more. I was very gentle with my fertilizer because I didn't really think that trees needed that much fertilizer. I mean, when you see trees growing, who's going by and fertilizing them on a regular basis? And you don't see people dumping the fertilizer on. They seem so self-sufficient. But what I realized is that these trees, because they produce so much growth and they produce so much fruit, that you do have to come in on a very regular basis to make sure that they're continuing that growth and that production. And so I actually had to fertilize two times a year and I fertilized about a quarter cup each time, which is a lot of fertilizer, a lot more fertilizer than I was giving them. And so it was a great lesson that I was able to learn through these trees, despite again, kind of the, you know, the struggles that I've had. I did learn some good stuff as I was growing these trees. So that's the fifth thing that I learned is fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. They love lots of fertilizer. All right, and the sixth and final thing that I've learned from growing these apple trees is knowing when to cut off a bad relationship. Now, as I said in the very beginning of this episode, one of the biggest mistakes that I made when growing these trees was not planting them, was telling myself that maybe next year is gonna be different. Because had I realized that, 
had I had a crystal ball and realized that nothing was really gonna be different, I could have saved myself all this trouble four or five years ago. And that's because when I planted these trees and I realized that things were kind of becoming an uphill battle and I had learned more about the trees that I had planted and I realized that I planted wrong varieties and that I planted only one variety, I realized that there was not really gonna be a whole lot that would change. But I was so attached to the trees growing that I was more attached to the fact that they were growing for me and in my garden than I was the fact that they weren't giving me any fruit. Now, yes, in the spring, the blossoms are beautiful. But what is the point of having a tree that takes up this much space in my garden, that uses all the nutrients in the soil, brings in more pests into the garden, um, brings in things like disease, uh, brings in things like wasps that eat all the nasty apples that fall to the ground, if there's really no benefit, if you're not really getting anything from them. And so I had to realize that enough is enough and nothing was getting different, nothing was changing. The uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And for me, I must have been insane for like five, six years because these trees were three years old when I planted them. After years, th about three or four, they would have been about seven years old. Definitely mature enough to have given me fruit, see how they're gonna grow for me. And at you know seven, eight years old, um, they still hadn't given me a single fruit. In the entire lifespan of these trees on our property, we're going on about 11 years total. Three years old when I planted, seven years, uh, going on eight years that they've been on our property. We've only gotten one table apple, one. Both trees, <laughs> 11 years old, one apple. And had I realized that sooner, I could have ripped these out. I could have just cut ties, planted a variety that would have done much better in my region. I would have planted two different varieties. I would have taken the things that I had learned or the things that people had told me, applied them in my garden, and I probably could have already at this point been having you know, a beautiful harvest of, of apples. And this is, kind of, this is a constant problem that a lot of gardeners face is they become so emotionally wrapped up in the idea of having an apple tree and the fact that they have an apple tree already that they can't part ways with it when things are going south. And so um, for different gardeners, this, is gonna come, this conclusion will come at a different time for everybody. But what I would say is that at some point, start having that conversation with yourself. For me, it was last year. That's when the conversation started. And I've been on the record as saying that, that when I started having problems and I started realizing that every year I was saying the same thing and nothing was changing, I made myself a promise. I made you guys a promise that if I did not get fruit this year, edible fruit, beautiful fruit, even after spraying and all the other stuff, if I didn't end up with enough apples to make it worth my while, these trees were gone. And I said that last year. And I'm holding myself accountable to this promise that I'm not gonna keep these trees in my garden if they're not gonna produce anything for me. And so I'm gonna cut them out. We're gonna be using the apple wood in our smoker. So not all is gonna go to waste. There'll still be a harvest. We're gonna get some, some uh, apple wood for smoking. And so that'll at least be good, but these will be gone. And um, I just think it's super important that you start telling yourself that, that uh, it's okay to realize you made mistakes, but all you're doing, because these apple trees, any fruit tree, takes so long to get established that every year that you tell yourself, maybe next year and you wait one more year, that's one less year you have of growing something that's gonna be producing for you. And so um, it's not the most fun episode I've ever done, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Um, we're gonna just let these kind of live out the rest of their life. Uh, and then I'm gonna chop them down uh, at the end of the season once they drop their leaves. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I'll learn something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, everyone. Bye.